Hi there and welcome to the first Gaming Memories video since March of this year. It's been quite some time since the last one. I've got a little bit sidetracked with budget publisher showdowns and compilation comparisons and things like that. So I've had this idea in mind though since April of this year and it's a sort of counterpoint to a video I did at the end of last year which was the top 10 unofficial BBC Micro clones of arcade games. So this one's going to be the top 10 official licensed arcade games for the BBC Micro. Now this is something that's actually quite difficult to put together because there are only about 20 to 25 arcade games officially ported to the Beeb. Most of the major publishers like Ocean and US Gold didn't really do much on the BBC Micro, so it wasn't very well supported. And some of those that were ported over were really terrible. For example, let's take a look at a couple of those now. Paperboy for starters, I had this when I was a kid and it's really bad. It kind of looks like it's a port from the Spectrum version, but it isn't because the Spectrum version looks nothing like this. They chose this horrible yellow and blue colour scheme when they could have done a lot more on the BBC Micro in terms of the colours and it moves at an absolute snail's pace. And some of the characters are drawn really badly, most notably the stick dogs. Another terrible port to the BBC Micro by Elite Software was Commando. Just take a look at this footage from the horrible yellow backgrounds to the flick screen scrolling to the fact that your commando can only shoot one or two bullets at a time when you're expecting to be using a machine gun. It's just a really terrible port compared to one to other 8-bit systems of the time. And to round off a trio of terrible ports, take a look at this version of Green Beret. I mean, what is going on here? You can barely see your character against the background. Once again, it's flick screen rather than smooth scrolling, and it's absolutely rock hard and bears almost no resemblance to the arcade game, with most of the features of the game missing. So you only have to look at those examples to see why I was really keen to get a Commodore 64. Especially as by 1986 to 87, there are very few arcade games being ported to the Beeb anymore and I was missing out on all that good stuff from the late 80s. Now having said all that, I've played through all the arcade conversions on the Beeb that I can find and come up with what I think is the 10 best ones. So let's get started! Before I begin, if you want to play some near perfect conversions of classic arcade games on the Beeb, then be sure to try out Richard Broadhurst's homebrew ports from the last few years. Since this video is about arcade conversions published in the commercial era of the BBC Micro, I won't be featuring any of Richard games in my list, but they're well worth checking out and you can download them from bbcmicro.co.uk. Now let's kick off the countdown and in 10th place we have Star Wars, published by Domark in 1987 based on Atari's 1983 arcade game. As you may already know, I'm a huge Star Wars fan and the original Atari coin-up is one of my favourite arcade machines of all time. Nothing really comes close to the immersive feeling of sitting in the cockpit version, blasting TIE fighters and charging down the Death Star trench, with the action rendered in vibrant wireframe graphics accompanied by a superb rendition of the film's iconic theme and voice samples from the movie. Now clearly no home computer version of the game is really going to compare with the arcade original, but the BBC Micro conversion is one of the better ones. It's reasonably fast, certainly faster than the C64 version, and the vector graphics are recreated as well as you can expect for an 8-bit system with a raster screen. The big shame here, and you've probably already noticed, is that the sound in the game is woeful. The laser sound is incredibly annoying and there's no music, even before the game starts or during the end of level sequence. As a result, I'd recommend you choose to turn off the sound before playing and listen to a copy of John Williams' original score instead. Gameplay wise it's not too bad to begin with but it gets very hard from stage 3 onwards. Controlling the game with a keyboard is a far cry from the yoke control of the arcade cabinet and it's very hard to get the crosshairs around the screen quickly enough to blast all the fireballs being shot from the TIE fighters. The crosshairs does auto center if you stop firing so that might be something that can be exploited to make further progress with some practice. However this may be one BBC game that's better played with a joystick though support for a mouse would have been the perfect option. Overall it's not a hugely fun game to play in this form, but it's an admirable effort to recreate one of Atari's best arcade games. Incidentally, Domart was one of the few cross-platform publishers to support the Beeb in its later commercial life, and also released the two arcade sequels to Star Wars along with a conversion of Atari's Clax and a couple of their licensed James Bond games too. At number 9 is Robotron 2084, published by Atarisoft in 1984, a conversion of the 1982 arcade game. In the early days of the Beeb, Atari itself dabbled with software for the system, releasing a few arcade conversions before pulling out of the market for the British computer. Oddly, none of them were conversions of their own arcade games, Robotron having originally been developed by Williams Electronics. In the arcade, this game was well known for being one of the innovators of the twin stick arena shooter genre, as you use one joystick to move around the play area while the other controls the direction of fire. 
Some home versions of the game struggle to implement this, but to Atari Soft's credit, the BBC version does accommodate it. Using the keyboard, this is quite complicated, as you're effectively using four fingers on each hand to control the player, which really tests your brain power. The game does also support dual joysticks, but given how poor the Beeb's joysticks were in general, that might not be much of an improvement. This game's notoriously tough anyway, and the controls do make it even harder, but it is a pretty decent interpretation of the arcade original. There's lots of sprites on screen, and all the enemies from the arcade version seem to be present, but the choice of one of the Beeb's four colour graphics modes does mean it lacks some of the arcade game's vibrancy. The sounds are not especially close to the original game, but they are still nice and loud, so they do the job, and most importantly, the speed of the game is decent, so the challenge feels similar to the Queenop version. Number 8 is Tempest, published by Superior Software in 1985, based on Atari's 1981 coin-op. Continuing the Atari connection, this is one of the few officially licensed arcade conversions from Superior, who are more well known for clones than official ports. Like Star Wars, this is another one that had colour vector graphics in the arcade, and the BBC version does a reasonable job of recreating them. This isn't a game I'm especially familiar with, but this conversion seems to cover all the key elements, looking and sounding the part and capturing the fast and frantic blasting of the original. Just like the arcade version, you're able to pick a starting level up to a certain limit, and the controls are intuitive, including the ability to zap all enemies on screen once per stage. There's not much more for me to say about this one, it appears to be a decent and playable adaptation of a game that I'm not particularly fond of, so it's worth a try, but if you're a fan of the arcade game then you may find something to pick fault with. Up next in 7th place, and this might surprise a few people, it's Bubble Bobble, an unreleased game from 1989 based on Taito's 1986 arcade classic. As I've already mentioned, there weren't a great number of arcade conversions released for the Beeb, so as this list progresses you'll find me taking a few liberties with what qualifies for inclusion. A case in point is this conversion of my favourite arcade game, which was never actually released back in the day. Programmer Peter Gillette coded the game independently, largely based on the C64 version, and then approached Firebird Software to see if they were interested in publishing it. They were, but by 1989 interest in the Beaver was dwindling and ultimately they pulled the plug, though the game was later released on a public domain disc in the 90s. This conversion certainly looks and sounds the part, with the original's cute vibrant graphics and catchy theme recreated brilliantly. It is missing some sound effects, but overall it captures the aesthetics of the game incredibly well. Sadly, where it falls down is in the gameplay stakes. It moves at lightning speed. Captured enemies only stay that way for a matter of seconds and the hurry up message comes way too quickly, with Baron Von Blubber following moments later. Player movement is quite clunky though, so this makes it incredibly hard and with no continues you're unlikely to see far beyond the first 10 screens or so. Additionally, the game doesn't retain many of the arcade version's scoring mechanics and the power-ups are the same on every playthrough. It's also got quite awkward keyboard controls that aren't redefinable, though that does allow it to accommodate two players on the keyboard and it might be an easier game with somebody to help you out. Ultimately, the game feels like what it probably was, an unpolished pre-release version that needed some fine-tuning to bring it in line with the arcade original. It's certainly a brave attempt though, and had it been released at the same time as the other 8-bit versions, I'm sure it would have been a big seller. Next at number 6 is Hypersports, published by Imagine Software in 1984 based on the Konami arcade game. This BBC conversion of Konami's sequel to Track and Field was released the same year as the arcade game, so it would have certainly cashed in on its popularity. It is of course a classic button bashing multi-event sports game with 6 events, swimming, skeet shoot, long course, archery, triple jump and weightlifting. It is missing the final event from the arcade version which was Pole Vault. 
This is a reasonable conversion but it has to be said that the graphics and sound don't quite capture the essence of the original game. They're not bad but the character sprites in particular don't look much like their arcade counterparts. The keyboard controls do feel a bit awkward too as you have to use Z and question mark to run or swim and the spacebar for the actions. It would have been easier if you could redefine the keys to use three that are closer together. The game's also one player only so you'll miss the fun of playing against a human opponent. Despite all those niggles it's a decent enough recreation of Konami's game and each event plays similarly so just like in the arcade I can rarely get past the triple jump. It's playable and fun for a while though and there is a nice chiptune version of the Chariots of Fire music on the otherwise bland title screen. In 5th place is Hunchback, released by Superior Software in 1983, inspired by the Century Electronics arcade game from the same year. This game has quite an interesting history. It began life as an unlicensed clone of the coin-op, but when Century Electronics expressed concerns about its similarity to their game, Superior negotiated a royalty agreement with Century and added some copyright text to the instructions screen, effectively making it an officially licensed game after the fact. Furthermore, Ocean Software, who had licensed the game for home computers, later approached Superior to handle the Acorn Electron version of the game, which was a port of their Beeb version but released in Ocean's packaging. Given that the game began life as a clone, it doesn't perfectly recreate the original arcade game, with elements such as the super bonus being omitted. Having said that, it looks and plays a lot nicer than the arcade version, with Quasimodo moving nice and quickly and the graphics and sound being more appealing. It's just as hard as the original game with some infuriating pixel perfect timing required, especially on the stages with ropes, but definitely has some one more go appeal. Being able to select which stage you start on from the title screen is a nice touch, and it's a game I played a lot when I was a kid as it was on one of the very first dodgy disc compilations we ever had. In 4th place is Donkey Kong Jr, an Atari Soft game from 1984 converting Nintendo's 1982 arcade game. Here's another unreleased game, one of several that were due to be published by Atari Soft until they decided to abandon the BBC Micro. It still made it out into the world somehow though, as I remember playing it on another disc full of random games back in the 80s. The game was coded by Adrian Stevens who created the superlative Mr E which topped my list of the best arcade clones for the Beeb. He did an equally excellent job with this official conversion of Donkey Kong Jr, with the graphics and sound effects matching the original game as well as can be expected. The gameplay is also spot on which of course means it's incredibly difficult, with progress beyond even the first stage being the mark of a highly skilled player. Like many games in this list, I wouldn't call this a favourite but it's a very good conversion of a rock hard game and the only official Nintendo game to make its way to this system. Into the top 3 then in 3rd place is Pole Position, another Atari soft release from 1984, this time based on Namco's 1982 coin op. The third and final Atari soft game in this list, Pole Position is a highly competent conversion of the original game, which sees you compete in a qualifying lap on the Fuji Speedway to earn a place amongst the top 8 cars that then go on to compete in a multi-lap Grand Prix race. The game allows you to choose the number of laps in the main race, which is a nice enhancement to the original game, and the controls are nicely thought out as well. Your car automatically accelerates, which means you only have to worry about steering, braking and changing gear. The graphics are a reasonable representation of the arcade version, though most of the roadside objects are omitted and the cars have a strange colour scheme. The sounds are fairly standard of the genre with engine and braking noises, and the game does also feature the recognisable jingles when starting and ending races. The faux 3D effect is achieved quite well and while it is a little jerky at times, the overall sense of speed is good. This is another game I'm not particularly a fan of, but given the restrictions of the system this is a good version of it and one of the best of a small number of 3D racing games released for the system, so it's well worth a play. It was coded by Richard G. Warner whose only other credit for the B was the welcome package that shipped with all BBC Micros and features some very simplistic games written in BASIC, so Pole Position is quite an impressive step up from that.
In second place is Tapu, published by US Gold in 1985, based on the 1983 arcade game from Bally Midway. Tapu's a game I've never played back in the 80s, but I've become a fan of it in the last decade or so and always give it a play when I see it in a retro arcade. It's a totally original concept as you must serve drinks to the never ending stream of thirsty customers, filling and sending glasses of beer down four bars, collecting the empties and tips, and ensuring no glasses get broken. This conversion of the game uses one of the BBC Micro's four colour graphics modes, and as a result there are some garish colour combinations on some levels, but aside from that this is a really great conversion of the original game. All the gameplay elements are present and the controls are accurate and responsive, so you can quickly move from one tap to another, dash down the bars to collect tips and glasses, and then move up or down to materialise next to the tap on another bar. Just like the arcade game, the pressure builds up as each level progresses until you end up in full panic mode with a barrage of customers, but if your reactions are quick enough you can get out of most tricky situations. The game also features the bonus level where you have to choose and open a can that hasn't been shaken up and features some nice tunes and adequate sound effects, so look past the chunky sprites and strange colour choices and you'll find a really playable conversion of this unique game. And finally, the number one arcade conversion on the BBC Micro is Arkanoid, released by Imagine Software in 1987 based on the 1986 game from Taito. Topping this list of arcade ports is this brilliant adaptation of the most famous of all enhanced breakout games. Programmed by conversion specialist Peter Johnson, who also ported games like Mikey, Crystal Castles and Impossible Mission to the Beeb, this is just about as close a recreation of the original arcade game as you can get. Of course it's not the most complex game, mostly consisting of blocks and simplistic sprites, but it's still a fantastic conversion, with the graphics and sound being almost perfect within the limitations of the system. All the enemies and power-ups are present and work as designed, and the movements of your paddle is as smooth as can be achieved using keyboard controls. It even has a decent adaptation of the opening prologue that describes the backstory of the game, along with the image of the Arkanoid spaceship. The only minor variance from the coin-up original is that the power-ups drop a little slower in the BBC version, and so can sometimes be hard to collect as you focus on returning the ball. Aside from that, my only issue with the game is that I'm not really very good at it, but that's been consistent for every version I've ever played. This video wasn't necessarily about which games I like most as much as which were the best ports, and therefore I have no issues with naming Arkanoid as the best arcade conversion for the BBC Micro. That's all for my list of the top 10 official arcade conversions for the BBC Micro. Let's be honest, this is the best of a not especially good bunch and I had to take a few liberties to even come up with a top 10. Having said that, there are a few decent games in there so let me know what you think about my picks, and if you had any favourite arcade ports on the Beeb or want to mention anything good that I missed, then please leave a comment. If this is your first time watching one of my videos then please check out my channel and consider subscribing for weekly retro gaming content. Thanks very much for watching and until next time, happy gaming! <laughs>